Hi, this is a series of videos that is meant to help you on your computer-aided analysis of infrastructure course taught by Dr. Gunner here at the University of Toledo. In this series, I'm gonna teach you how to basically use SAP 2000 to model your homework and assignment problems. Uh, this first video is just an introduction to SAP 2000 where you will get to know a little bit more of the user interface, how to create projects, how to do a simple analysis and really basic stuff so we can move to examples in next videos. So first, one thing you should know is how to access the documentation of SAP 2000 because that will help you uh, learn what you can do in SAP 2000. So here I have SAP 2000 open on this computer. First, one thing you should know is that every computer in the engineering uh, campus of the University of Toledo have SAP 2000 installed. So if you're in the Nishk uh, building in the Palmer Hall or in the North Engineering building, any, um, any lab should have SAP 2000 pre-installed on their computers. So you can go to basically any lab and access SAP 2000 for that. My version is SAP 2000 version 17, but basically for what we will cover in this series, any version of SAP 2000 will work. And they are basically the same for the scope that we are working on here. So to access the user's manual of SAP 2000, you can come to this help menu and click on documentation. Here in documentation, you can double click the manuals and come to the analysis reference manual. It will open up a PDF. It will show you the cover of the PDF. Here you can see at page 30, the page that I was before, that SAP 2000 will tell you the objects that it works with. So here you have point objects that are joint objects and grounded link support objects. You also have line objects, which are comprised of four types. The frame objects that we will be using a lot in this series, the cable objects that we'll also be using, the tendon objects, the connecting link support objects, the area objects or shell elements, to model plates, membranes, and etc., like walls and floors. Also, solid objects for three dimensional solid objects. Now that we know what objects SAP 2000 can model, let's go back to the SAP 2000, cancel that, and see how we can create a new project. So, here, file, we can come to File, New, file, new Model, or we can come to this icon, which is also called New Model. When you click on it, this uh, first window will pop up. And this is important because this is where you're going to define the units of your uh, analysis project. And also, you have different templates you can choose depending on what uh, structure you're going to model. So, for example, if you have just a beam, you can easily click on here or 3D, 2D trusses, 3D trusses, 2D frames. 3D frames that we will cover in the series as well, walls, flat slabs, shells, staircases, storage structures, underground concrete, solid models, pipes, and plates. In this series, we will be basically covering the grid-only template, the 2D trusses template, uh, the frames, 2D frames, and 3D frames. Although you can use this that I just mentioned to easily create your projects, our uh, examples will be always made on this grid only. This grid only is a general grid that you can use to model any of these kind of structures. That's why um, I'm going to be using this template because it's, it's more of a general approach to model anything you like in SAP 2000. So let's click on this blank just so I can talk a little bit about the user interface of SAP 2000. So here we have two views, the 3D view, and when we have a uh, structure, this will be a 2D view. So while you can see the entire structure in 3D on your right hand side, in the left hand side, you will be able to model the 
planes of your structure. This will help us a lot in the subsequent uh, examples that I will be dealing in this series. So to talk about a little bit about the user interface, we can come here to the left hand side on the bottom and you can see that this is the selection menu. In here, you have this option to select all. We'll select all your, all, your, all your members, elements in the structure that you will have over here. This one is the you select using intersecting line, which you will be able to draw a shape and everything that's inside this shape will be selected. To close the shape, just double click it. And this one is the previous selection. If you had something previously be uh, selected before, and this just clears all the selection. The next one, in the user interface is this called snap toolbar. This is where you select where your mouse will snap to. We don't have any grids yet. So the select one points and grid intersections is selected, but we can show you because we don't have grids. I'll show this in action when we, when we actually model something. The next one in the user interface is the drawing toolbar. In here, you can select uh, the mouse or the select mode where you can click individual frame elements when you have something. But here you can also use these buttons to model your structure. So for example, here you use to draw a special joint. Here you draw a frame or a cable, which we'll be using a lot in this series. And we have some other different options, such as the polygonal area, the rectangular area, and so on. The next one is the zooming toolbar which we will use to focus on some individual area of our uh, project. And they are basically intuitive, where you use this to zoom in, this to zoom out, this to select in a specific area, and this to restore the full view of the structure. The next part of our user interface is the viewing toolbar, which is this part over here. Like I told you before, the left-hand side will be a 2D view, while the right-hand side will be a 3D view. So here you can change in which plane will you be seeing in the 2D view. So if you want to see the X, Y, the base plane of our structure, we can click here, X, Z, and Y, Z. We can also toggle the 3D view, which will bring both windows to be a 3D perspective of our structure. And we have the perspective toggle, which will kind of put us in the view of a person in the ground level of our structure. And here we can use to rotate the 3D view. Okay, the next part of our user interface is this section over here. This is the display options. Right here, you can select different information that you wanna see on your structures. For example, if you wanna see the numbers of your joints, you can click here. We will also have these same informations and additional ones for the frame, cables, attendance, elements, as well as different other options that you can play with to see what it does in this uh, window. Lastly, in this part over here on the right uh, bottom right hand side, you can see that you can deal with uh, global coordinate systems and also you can change your units again if you want to change them after you define it when you create your project. All right, now that we talk about the user interface, let's talk a little bit about coordinate systems. In SEP 2000, we have basically two main coordinate systems. One is the global one, the one you see on the screen right here. And another one is the element uh, coordinate system or the local coordinate system. The global one is the one you see on the screen here now where X is called direction one, Y direction two and Z direction three. To illustrate the local uh, coordinate system, let's open up the documentation of SEP 2000 and type in the page 131. This is the frame element section, local coordinate, local coordinate system section. And here you can see that we have an element that comes from point I to point J. So the direction number one will always be the direction along the axis of the element. And your direction two and three will be orthogonal to this. So you can see here that 
depending on the cross section you have on your element, you will have to rotate to fit the bending direction that you want on your structure. For that, and we'll be talking about this in later videos, we can change the local coordinate uh, angle that we see over here, 90 degrees. We can change this angle in SAP 2000. All right, so to finish up this uh, introduction video, let's just talk a little bit about the general steps that we need to run an analysis in SAP 2000. So first of all, coming back to this file, we can create a new model. Let's not save this. First of all, we have to develop and choose a template. Like I told you before, we'll be mostly dealing with the grid only uh, template. So for the purpose of this illustration, let's just select blank. Second, what you need to do is to define the materials and sections that you want to be assigning to your element. So to define that, we come to define, we can click on both materials and sections to define them, selecting the appropriate tool. So SAP 2000 already comes with two predefined materials, one for concrete and another one for steel. You will probably not be using this, but you can always come to the add new material or modify the existing material to adjust these materials to the one you need on your problems. To define a section, we can select the appropriate tool that we want depending on the problem we have and then define them, adding a new property and choosing the appropriate tool that we want. Again, we will be talking about this stuff more in details when you come up to our problems in the next videos. One thing to keep in mind is that in your problems, you, don't, you are not going to be given a defined section that you need to model, but you're going to be given an area. So what you need to do is basically come to the sections, add a new property. You will probably deal either with steel or concrete, select an appropriate um, profile that you want and tweak them in order to have the same area and the same moment of inertia that was specified to you. So after we define the materials and define the cross sections, we can come to create the elements in our structure. So we will be either probably coming here to the draw frame cable, we'll be selecting this and we'll be just simply drawing our structure. Once we do that, we will select the nodes of the base to create a restraint. We will come here after we have the joint selected in this menu and, so, and assign restraints to those joints to become a support. So later, later on, we come to the assign as well and we will assign frame or joint loads to the structure. After we have the loads assigned on it, we can come and define load patterns, load cases and load combinations depending on our problems. Finally, before running the analysis and gathering the results, we will come to set analysis options. And since we'll be basically dealing with 2D structures, we can come and simplify our analysis by unselecting the degrees of freedom that our structure doesn't have. For example, if we have a structure in the XZ plane, we don't need to care about the Y plane uh, degree of freedom. So we can come here, unselect them, or just select this option, depending on which plane we draw our structure. This will uh, make SAP 2000 ignore the degrees of freedom that our structure doesn't have and we will make the analysis faster. Once we, once we did that, we can come to the run analysis and simply run uh, the load cases we had created and we will see the results on our structure. So basically, this is just an introduction to SAP 2000 that will help us to model uh, simple examples in the next videos. I hope that you find this video useful and that this helps you to understand a little bit better how to deal with SAP 2000 analysis projects and that this helps you in your future assignments and homework problems. Thank you.